Doing the same video content over and over takes a bit of a toll. Look, I needed a break. So, I'm glad I finally got to try something different. Today we're checking out the LCO3 microserver by LCMD. This is an early look at an unfinished product that's still being developed and is currently available up on Kickstarter. They reckon first units will ship in November. We're going to check out how it works right now. I think it's an interesting product, especially from a design point of view. LCMD told me that the final unit will have an improved finish and better overall build quality, but I can't really see any issue with this pre-production sample. It's already really nice and solid with a much cooler design than most pieces of hardware I get my hands on. It's a mostly metal box with a space age theme, which will have people asking, what's that box over there? This early production sample came with a compact GAN power supply and ethernet cable, but the final product will also have a couple of SATA cables, which wasn't included for this sample. The LCO3 can hold up to 7 storage drives all up. It's got 5 2280 M.2 Gen 4 X1 slots available and two 2.5 inch SATA ports, all fitting in this super compact box. Maybe even a little bit too compact, but I'll come back to that. A micro server or NAS doesn't need that much processing power. We've looked at devices with Intel's budget N100 and N150 before, which can do a decent job for many tasks. But the LCO3 kicks it up a notch and comes with Intel's i5 13500H. It's a 12 core, 16 thread processor with UHD graphics. However, there's only one DDR5 RAM slot included, but there is support for up to one 64 gigabyte RAM stick. LCMD's Kickstarter has already gone beyond its original goal, but they say pledging early gives you a discount off the retail price. The base model configuration, which is the same one I received, has 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM and two terabytes of storage. There's also a 512 gigabyte OS SSD included. All this comes in at 769 US dollars or a bit under 1200 Aussie dollars. There are various options available, including an AI pod add-on, which has an Nvidia Jetson chip in it. For ports, the LCEO3 has HDMI 2.1, dual 10 gigabit USB-C, three USB 5 gigabit ports, an audio jack, 2.5 gigabit network port, and a mode and power button. There's also Wi-Fi 6E AX210 for wireless and Bluetooth. With those ports, I suppose you could use it as a mini PC if you really wanted to, but that would be the equivalent of throwing cash down the toilet as there are plenty of cheaper and way better options for that usage case. Honestly, the LCO3 is a very different beast entirely. Okay, let's take a look under the hood. First off, we have torque screws, and then a lot more Phillips screws to get through. The design is really impressive if we don't take into account the user experience. They've connected two boards with storage slots and I.O. on each to make it even more compact. But to get to the OS drive, look how many screws you have to go through, and it's only a little less if you want to access the other four M.2 slots. Included with this pre-production model are Samsung drives and crucial memory. I don't remember seeing Samsung drives included with any pre-built hardware I've looked at, ever. LCMD has made their own operating system for the LCO3 known as LZCOS, which is based on Debian Linux. Initial setup is very easy. Plug in the power and ethernet cable if you want to make it even easier. But Wi-Fi works too. Then download the app for your phone, which will run a VPN connection. Scan the QR code under the unit. Name the microserver. Choose your connection method, and once it finds it, you can create the account details to access it. Hard drive encryption is offered for added security. And then you'll be prompted to press the mode button when the unit flashes red. Final setup will begin, and there it is on the phone with a system update to install. But from here, you can use your PC or Mac if you prefer. The update went smoothly, and here's the application page. LCMD has their own app repository, with over 2,000 apps with popular options like Plex and Jellyfin. They all run inside Docker containers. While the mobile app is nice, let's switch to the PC for some more screen real estate. The desktop app can also be found on their webpage. We add our account details, 
And Bob's your auntie's sister's brother's father's uncle. Look, it's all pretty newbie friendly up to that point. However, while there are a lot of options in the client, one that's missing is SMB. A protocol for sharing files and folders with basically every OS out there. I thought it had to be somewhere, but before I message LCMD, I asked my buddy Nick from Gear Seekers to take a second look. That guy knows this kind of stuff inside and out. After some messing around, it turns out that you need to install an SMB app. That'll give you an address you can plonk into Windows and make it available to map as a network drive to drag and drop files as you please. I think this should be in the default settings as it's not too user friendly. Anyway, once that was established, I copied some files over Wi-Fi, which worked fine considering the distance tested at, and then played an AK video file using the video app. It worked great, although playback is limited to 4K since that's my max monitor resolution. Something like Plex and Jellyfin work fine too. You just need to head to the App Store and install them. You can also plug an HDMI cable into the unit and turn your TV into a really fancy smart display while using your phone as a remote. But much like the mini PC scenario, for the price, you could get a decent smart TV or even an Apple TV. This use case really isn't the best use of this box. Many small NAS devices aren't very quiet, especially those using 3.5 inch spinning rust drives, but the LCO3 had impressively low noise during all my testing, and being as powerful as it is, most of the apps don't put much stress on the CPU, so it doesn't run hot either. Idle power draw isn't very impressive at around 21 watts, and the maximum I hit was around 60, which is fine. I think the main concern people have with this box is how privacy is handled, since there's a lot of pre-configured software. It's hard to know exactly what it's doing without a security deep dive. I think the best thing is for LCMD to let people know what information is being shared with the manufacturer in detail and give them an option to opt out. That should alleviate some of the concern. Apart from that, I have to say LCMD's LCO3 microserver has potential. To conclude, the LCO3 works pretty well without any major bugs. The upside is they have time to add more features for the launch in November. I like how easy the initial setup was. I like the look of the box, and the fans being quiet is a big bonus. But it's an absolute mission to populate with extra drives. Not only that, mapping it as a network drive or just connecting to it over the network without guidance was more difficult than expected. Luckily, installing apps is straightforward with many being pretty easy to use. The price isn't cheap, but you do get quality components. Not only that, the OS is being actively developed which means there's an ongoing cost for the company at no cost to you. Unlike other brands, there isn't a subscription model used for this box at all. The issue is, how long will something like this be supported and maintained? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Oh, and I forgot to mention it's got a three year warranty that's included with a price, which is nice. Overall, the LCO3 is an interesting product that's not really for the newbies, but probably not for the advanced user either. It falls somewhere in between. If you like what you see, check out the link in the video description. And as always, thanks for watching. Cheers.